Hi, I'm Christina with Proven Winners Color Choice Flowering Shrubs, and today I want to talk all about growing hydrangeas in containers. There are so many elements to this amazing garden project, so we're going to go through each one, uh, look at the timestamps if you want to just skip to a certain section, but we will start with the basics. Are you gardening a temporary or a permanent planting? A temporary planting is just for one season. You just wanna use it as your thriller, just toss it in a pot, and then not worry about it for another season. A permanent planting you will have in the same container for three to five years, depending on the soil, if it needs to be replaced, or if the plant needs to be potted up into a bigger container, or if it needs to be just put into the ground. So. Starting with that, uh, you will decide what hydrangea you need. Choosing a hydrangea. There are so many different types of hydrangeas and pretty much all of them will grow in a container. You've got panicle, smooth, big leaf, mountain, and oak leaf. Now, the one thing I'll say about oak leaves is that they don't look their best in a container. They kind of look a little gangly. You can see their twisted, curvy stems, and that's just not for everybody. Now you're gonna choose your hydrangea based on a few different criteria. You're going to choose uh, based on your zone, the size of the plant and the light requirements. Let's start with zone. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your plant is at least two zones hardier than the zone that you're gardening in. So say you are a zone six gardener, you're gonna want a hydrangea that's hardy down to zone four, and that will just make absolutely 100% sure that it's not going to just get blasted by the winter time. You can get away with growing a hydrangea that's a little bit less cold uh, hardy than that, maybe just one zone colder than your zone, but to be safe, go with two zones. Next is the sun requirement. So you're working with full sun or part sun. Most hydrangeas don't really grow that well in full shade. So full sun is anything that gets six hours or more direct sunlight. And part sun is anything that gets four to six hours of direct sunlight. For a full sun garden, choose a panicle hydrangea. That'll be your best bet. If you're gardening in the south, uh, don't grow hydrangeas in containers in your full sun spot. You just will have a battle of it. Uh, anything else, you can grow big leaves, smooth hydrangeas, mountain hydrangeas in those part shade areas, um, as well as panic hydrangeas. And the last element you're gonna wanna consider is the size of the hydrangea. So if it's a temporary planting, you don't really need to worry about it. Just buy a hydrangea that looks good right out of the gate because that's pretty much what it will do for the season. But if it's a permanent planting, definitely choose a hydrangea that will fit within the space. It does take anywhere from five to seven years for a shrub to mature to its mature height. Uh, but if you're planning on growing it season after season after season, definitely don't get an eight foot wide and tall plant if you only have four feet uh, wide and tall for it to grow. For ideas for which hydrangeas would look good in your container display, check out our article in the link below. It will give you ideas about which hydrangeas can go in compact, mid-size, and large displays. Now let's plant a hydrangea. It starts with a container. For a temporary planting, all it needs is a hole in the bottom and sides to contain it. So you can use whatever you want, really. You can use anything vintage that you found, old water troughs, a barrel. So long as it has drainage, you are good to go. Now for a permanent planting, you wanna choose something that is made out of the right material. Something that won't shatter when the cold comes along. And now, if you're thinking cold does not come along, then you're lucky. You can also use whatever container you would like. Go ahead um, and use something like clay or terracotta. But like I said, if you have those freezing temperatures, choose something that either has the sticker that says frost proof, or go with a container that isn't uh, terracotta or clay. There are a lot of really nice plastic pots out there. Uh, the same thing goes about drainage though. Make sure that it has at least one drainage hole in the bottom and then the size of the pot. Uh, usually we have found that 16 to 24 inches uh, wide and deep will accommodate a good size hydrangea for a couple of years. Now, if you're working with a really big hydrangea, you'll definitely need a bigger pot. Make sure that there are at least like two inches of clearance on either side of that root ball so that it has room to grow its roots outward. 
And on the flip side, don't choose too big of a container either. It's very tempting to choose a container that your hydrangea can live in for years to come, but planting a very small plant in a very big container without anything else in it, uh, you run the risk of that soil holding way too much moisture and that root ball getting really waterlogged. So try to size the container to the plant that you have currently. Now let's talk about what goes in that container besides the hydrangea. Starting with soil. So just use a potting soil mix. Don't use the soil from your actual garden. It's just gonna be too heavy, too dense. Um, actual potting soil that's made for containers is gonna be great for your container because it's gonna be light and fluffy, easy for water and air and the roots to move through. Water. Water needs to go in your container a lot more than you might be planning on. Containers dry out so much faster than gardens, so it's good to check your plant at least every day. Make sure that that soil moisture is still uh, either moist or just about dry, and then give it a soak. Water all the way around the root ball and make sure that you see the water coming out of the bottom. Um, if you're not seeing water coming out of the bottom and you are really giving it a good water, it might be time to put some feet under it so that it can really drain freely. Fertilizer. For a temporary planting, the soil that you planted your hydrangea in is likely going to have plenty of nutrients in it for just that season. And for a permanent planting, be sure to apply some fertilizer in the springtime. Uh, obviously, hydrangeas are gorgeous, but they use a lot of nutrients each season to make those big, beautiful blooms and that foliage. So apply an all-purpose for a shrub fertilizer or a rose fertilizer uh, in the springtime. Just sprinkle it all the way around the base of the plant. Uh, be sure it's not touching any of the stems and water it in nicely. You can reapply if you would like. Do so before the end of July though, because uh, applying after late July will encourage the plant to produce way too much new growth that might be vulnerable to fall uh, frosts. And now for the moment we've been waiting for, we have everything we need. We've got our container. Okay. We've got our soil. We've got our hydrangea. And I need you to grab one more thing before we can really get started. And that is something to cover your drainage hole with. I have paper towel. You can also use a coffee filter or mesh. I don't really love to use big rocks uh, because sometimes those can get really jammed in there and uh, result in not so great drainage. So we will take our material and put it in the bottom of the pot over our drainage hole. If you have several, just put a little patchwork on the bottom there so your soil doesn't escape. Uh, and then depending on the height of your container in comparison to the height of your plant, you can put a little bit of soil at the bottom. I would try to put just a little bit, even if they are about even, just so that there is a little buffer between that container material and the bottom of your plant. So you'll get that soil at the bottom and then you will put the plant in while it's still in the nursery pot. Now I love this trick uh, because it makes things a, a lot easier. You will fill in the soil around the side of the pot. You'll make a little hole for the plant to fit back into uh, when you take it out. So just fill up all the way around the whole base of the plant. My container is filled up all the way around the pot uh, and the sun is now in my spot. So I'm just gonna move over really quick. All right, so now our hydrangea is nicely aligned with all of that potting soil. You're just gonna wiggle it out of here. Might need to use your feet to stabilize the pot. Just wiggle it out, maybe do a little couple shimmies and then gently raise it out of here and then you'll have a little hole for you to put, part of my hole, part of mine collapsed a little bit, but yours probably won't. So you'll have a little hole to tuck your hydrangea back in. Um, after you've roughed up the root system, uh, you'll just tuck it right back into this little hole that you've created and I'll meet you there. Our hydrangea is planted and I just wanna show you one thing. It is that the soil level that the hydrangea had when it was in the container is even with the soil that we added. It's all one level. The hydrangea isn't planted too deeply in the container so that new soil is on top of the root ball and it's not way too high above where the new soil is. Um, and 
that this soil level is under the lip of the container. Uh, that's just so that when you water, the water doesn't just roll right off of that and over the container and not go into the soil and into the roots. Now, give your container a really thorough watering. You're gonna wanna see the water come out of the bottom um, and then you'll walk away for about two hours or so, and then come back to your plant and see where that soil level is. If the soil around the sides of the hydrangea has sunken a little bit, add some more soil, water that new soil in a little bit again, um, and then after that, mulch it because mulch is going to help your plant retain the most water that it possibly can and help you water a little bit less. If this is a temporary planting for you, you're all done. You can stop watching the video. Uh, but if this is a permanent planting, let's talk about what you do with your pot over the winter. For areas that get cool, uh, definitely consider moving your hydrangea um, to a sheltered spot, something that is still outdoors because it's important for your hydrangea to experience the fluctuations of temperature so that it can keep its natural rhythm. Um, but somewhere that's out of the direct wind because wind dries plants out. Uh, it can also just tip your container over and break it. Uh, so and ideally, you're gonna pull it to the side of your dwelling uh, somewhere that it still receives precipitation, but not a lot of wind. And I want to stress that it does stay outside or somewhere that is very nearly the same temperature as outside. It's very tempting to bring our hydrangeas inside and see if we can get another bloom out of them. But that will just yank it right out of its natural rhythm and it will not be healthy in the future. So uh, you can overwinter it in a garage or an unheated breezeway. Just make sure that it is still getting water over the winter time. Um, but otherwise, outside is really best. And last thing is last, transplanting. So you will know that it is time to transplant your hydrangea when it starts to slow down. It's not putting on as much height or width or as many flowers as it has in years past. And this can happen anywhere from three to five years after you've planted your hydrangea. So there are two options. Uh, the first one is that you just put it into a bigger container. You're gonna rough up the root ball like we did before and just pop it into to a container that's a little bit wider and deeper. Or you can plant it out into the landscape and if you would like tips on doing that check out uh, one of our videos on planting shrubs we'll link it below if you have any questions about growing hydrangeas and containers ask them in the comments below and i'll see you again next time